In this session we'll be taking a look at tracking and rotoscoping strategies with the Boris Continuum Complete, Mocha and Mocha Pro tool sets for Avid Media Composer. The first example is a basic four point track of the background clip in V1 and insertion of the clip in V2. I'll select corner pin from the BCC Match Move group and drag it to V2. Now it's applied with its default settings. I'll select layer below as the background, scroll down to the motion tracker section and select track on the fly. Now I can align the point trackers with the corners I want to track. When I hit play the tracker motion is measured and when I turn off track on the fly the measured motion is applied back to the corners of my foreground clip. Next I'd like to apply a colour correction to the inner part of the frame and the image I've inserted. I'll select colour balance from the BCC colour and tone group and alt drag it to V2 to add it above the corner pin effect. Now I'll adjust the colour. In order to isolate the required region I'm going to use the mocha option in the pixel chooser. So I'll click launch mocha. Now I'm in the mocha UI. This is a planar tracking and rotoscoping subset of the tools in the full Mocha version. I'll click on Create Xpline, plot the four corners of my region and hit the hotkey C to close the shape. I'll marquee select the four shape vertices and drag on the tension handle to create straight corners. I'll increase the amount of pixels used for analysis to improve precision and hit the Track Forward button to track my shape. Now I'll hit the Save Project button and exit back to the Avid timeline. The colour correction is now applied to the shape I tracked in Mocha. The point trackers in the BCC tools are quick and easy to use for straightforward tasks. When working on more challenging shots with shadows, reflections, occlusions, lens curvature and so on, the precision of Mocha's planar tracker can provide more accurate tracking data and Mocha's Roto toolset can solve a range of problems. The goal in this example is to do a screen replacement over V1 with this clip with the wipe in V2. I'll add the BCC corner pin effect to V2 and set its background to first below. I'll be tracking the corners in Mocha later. In V3 I have a copy of the background plate so I can map the hand back in with a roto shape. I'll correct the green spill with the BCC Correct Selected tool by keying the spill colour and desaturating. Now I'll go to the Key and Blend group and Alt drag the BCC Pixel Chooser to V3 to add it above the colour effect. It's applied with its default settings which displays a black and white map from a Luma key. I'll change output mode to alpha channel and now V3 is luma keyed because the pixel chooser matte channel is set to luma. I'll set the matte channel to none for a solid matte and launch mocha to begin drawing my shape. I'll fast forward to when I've completed my shape which is a combination of tracked and animated keyframes. Now I'd like to track the corners for the screen, so I'll plot a new X-spline shape, hit C to close, marquee the points and drag the tension handle to straighten the corners. In Mocha, the order in which shape layers are stacked is important. The shape at the bottom of the layer list should define the plane which is furthest from the camera. Now I'll choose a colour for the screen shape matte and click on Show Matte. Dragging down on a button displays alternate options. In this case I'll show the track mat. Note how the hand shape in the foreground cuts a hole in the area to be tracked on the screen, protecting it from any tracking errors which might result from the occlusion. I'll increase the number of pixels to be analysed, choose to track perspective and begin tracking. Now I'll show the surface overlay. The surface overlay shows the corner alignment for the planar track I've measured. I'll hide the shape outline for a moment and position the corners of the surface. Now I'll turn on the grid to view the plane I've defined. Now I'm ready to export my tracking data. 
I can export a single point track for the center of the surface or a corner pin track for the four corner points. I don't need to use the screen mat in my comp so I'll turn its visibility off and leave the hand mat on. Now I'll save my project and exit from Mocha back to the timeline. I'll select V2, go to the motion tracker section of the corner pin effect, select load from the tracking data drop down and load the corner pin track I saved out of Mocha. Now the screen replacement is aligned with the Mocha track and the hand is comped back in with the Mocha shape. Now for a look at the advanced tools available in the Mocha V5 plugin. This is an optional upgrade, bringing the complete tracking, roto, removal, insert, lens analysis and stabilisation toolset of Mocha V5 to the Avid timeline. I'll begin with an example of tracking a shot with lens distortion. I'll select the Mocha plugin and drag it to the shot in my timeline. Now I'll launch the Mocha UI. Note that the full range of Mocha tools are available. I'll go to the Lens menu, set a minimum line length and hit Locate Lines. Now I'll hit New Line and connect the lines around what should be a straight edge to define the arc around the curvature of the lens. Now I'll select the type of distortion I want to analyse, in this case a single parameter barrel distortion hit calibrate and Mocha calculates the distortion value. Now I can undistort my clip if required. I'll render a single frame to show the result. Now I'll go to the clip menu and delete the rendered frame. I can export a distortion map clip from the lens menu if I want to use the lens data downstream, for example in a composition in Nuke or Flame. In this case I'm going to finish the composition in Mocha. Now that I've calibrated the lens distortion, this can be used in Mocha's tracking, roto and insert tools. I'll draw a shape around the screen and begin tracking. Now I'll hide my shape, show the surface and align its corners with the screen. Note how the measured lens distortion is applied to the surface. Now I'll go to the clip menu and import the clip I want to insert into the screen area. Now I'll switch back to my background clip. In the insert menu I'll select the imported clip from the clips list and it's mapped onto the surface with the measured lens distortion applied. Now I'll save my project and exit from Mocha back to the timeline. In the effect editor I'll twirl open the effect render options, select the remove result, turn render on and the result is rendered interactively to the timeline. Now for Mocha's advanced stabilisation tools. This shot features a wobbly vertical pan. I'd like to remove the wobble. I'll apply the Mocha plugin to the clip in the timeline and launch the Mocha UI. I'll draw a shape around the area that I want to track. If I begin tracking, the motion detected inside the shape is tracked and applied back to the shape's motion, so eventually the shape will move off screen. I can stop and reposition or scale the shape and continue tracking if I like, but I'm going to try a different approach. Before I do that, I'm going to go to the Dope Sheet view where I can edit my keyframes, marquee the tracker keyframes for the shape and hit backspace to remove them. Now I'll zoom out with the hotkey Z, pan with the hotkey X and draw another shape. By default a shape is linked to its own track. In this case I'm going to link the motion of the triangle in layer 2 to the track I'm measuring in layer 1. Now I'll set layer 1 so that it's linked to none and begin tracking layer 1. The motion detected inside the layer 1 shape is converted to tracking data which is applied to layer 2, which moves, but not to layer 1, which remains static as it's not linked to any tracker. Now I'll reset the zoom by holding Z and double clicking. Now that I have the tracked shape in layer 2 selected, I'll switch back to parameters and open the stabilize menu where I can use its motion to stabilize the clip. The stabilizer inverts both X and Y axis motion by default, so the upward pan motion will cause the clip to shift down and eventually out of frame. 
I'll disable y-axis stabilization, enable shear stabilization for the x-axis and set the number of frames over which I want to smooth the motion. Now the horizontal shift and shear are corrected resulting in a smooth vertical pan. As a result there's some horizontal blanking so I'll go to the border tab and select zoom in order to fill the screen with the available image data. I'll save the Mocha project, exit back to the timeline, twirl open effect render options, select the stabilized result, turn render on and the stabilized result plays back interactively. Lastly I'll use Mocha's remove tool. I like to remove the walker in the foreground from this scene. I'll apply the Mocha plugin, launch the Mocha UI, draw a rough shape around the walker and track it. Now I'll fast forward to when I've finished refining my shape by inserting keyframes. Note that the shape doesn't need to be too accurate, it just needs to cover the foreground object completely. Now I'll draw a shape to track the ground plane and drag it below the shape for the walker because the ground shape is the furthest from the camera. After I've tracked the ground shape through the entire clip I can adjust its size as required. I'll select the shape for the walker and go to the remove menu. Now I'll hit the render single frame button and Mocha automatically replaces the foreground shape with image data from the background. As in the previous examples, I don't need to render the whole clip in Mocha. I'll save the Mocha project, exit, select the remove result in the effect editor, turn render on and the result plays back. We've explored three different tracking, roto and effects strategies during this session. First we saw how the point trackers available in the BCC tools can help with everyday tracking tasks. Secondly, we saw how the Pixel Chooser option available in most BCC effects offers a light version of the Mocha toolset to help with more complex roto tasks and to obtain accurate tracking data from more challenging shots. Lastly, we saw how the Mocha Pro plugin brings the full power of Mocha Pro to the Avid timeline, supporting advanced compositing and cleanup tasks. I've just scratched the surface here, but there's plenty more detail available. For more in-depth BCC and Mocha tutorials, check out the links here.